Alrighty, so today we're going to be taking a look at the 8th generation Amazon Kindle. Uh, this is the uh, the new quote-unquote budget model, because they have the paper white, which is more expensive, and this is the... Uh this is the uh, the more affordable one, and as you can see, I got it here on Prime Day. Uh, I've actually never had an ebook uh, reader before, so this will be my first uh, take on what these are like. But I saw it was quite a good deal on Prime Day, so I thought, well, what the hell, I'll buy one there. Uh, in normal Amazon fashion, they sent it in a giant box here that is unnecessarily huge. But we'll, we'll go ahead and open that up. Now the new Kindle is supposed to be 11% thinner and 16% lighter than the old Kindle, not the papered white, but the old standard Kindle. So we'll see about that. And then of course, the biggest change is that the new one is touchscreen and doesn't have a keyboard anymore, which is kind of interesting. I don't know why they made that change. I guess they got the cost of the, uh, the digitizer down enough that they could, uh, that they could get that done for not a lot of money and still get you your Kindle. Alright, so there we are. See the giant box there, you know, all this plastic stuff inside. Throw that over there. Now look, there's a little box inside the big giant box. We'll throw that away. Now to make this an even bigger bargain, this was actually a refurbished Kindle. Uh, so I ended up getting this for, I believe it was $30 for the uh, 8th gen Kindle here. Uh, and like I said, I've never had an e-reader before. Uh, so I thought I didn't want to spend too much in case I, I never use it, you know. Uh, but I figured you know, it's a good place to start. You know, new Kindle. Uh, it's a good deal. Yeah, let's see, I got this little, I got this little pull tab here. Uh, it's sealed. Interesting way they do that. Uh, that stupid piece of shit. There you go. Pull that off. A little thing stuck to my fingers there. All right. Oh, let's see. Oh, I've got some stuff that's fallen out here. And like, how does, oh, there we go. So it opens from the top. <laughs> oh, stupid. Okay, so there it is. Okay, so here's how a refurbished Kindle, eighth generation comes, there it is. I guess the battery's dead. <laughs> this has an e-ink display, so, you know, at first look, it looks like it has, you know, like a sticker on the screen uh, with this with this battery logo on it, but I'm guessing it's actually just the e-ink uh, that's on there because the battery's dead. So it has this little book. In there. Oh, and this thing fell out. It tells you to plug it in, in case you don't know what a micro USB cable is. Oh, okay. Have you seen one of those before? A micro USB? I, 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 don't even, I don't know what they're talking about there. And there's the, there's the actual cable. And as a basis, a size comparison basis, because uh, I've never seen one of these before, I've never seen a Kindle before. Uh, there is my Surface Pro, and so you can see it is a lot bigger. <laughs> Quite a bit bigger than the, the Surface Pro 3 there. So I'll put that back to the side. Uh, we'll open it up. It's quite wee. It's, it's, it's actually quite wee. It's a lot smaller than I was expecting it to be. And it feels nice. Uh, like I said before, the old one had buttons and and uh, buttons along the bottom, a keyboard, and had, had the old one, had, old model, had buttons to uh, change the uh, the pages, to turn the pages. This one does not. Uh, oh, there's only one button on the bottom. Uh, there we go. Let's see if we can refocus. Oh, your stupid camera. There we go. Let's see if we can get that. Wait a minute. There we go. Oh, there's the focus. Where is it? Okay, there it is. So on the bottom, of course, we can't see that because it is no focused. Okay, so on the bottom, uh, there is a power button and the uh, the there it is, finally, focus. On the bottom there is a USB plug and the powered button. On the side, there is absolutely nothing. On the top, there is absolutely nothing. On the other side, there is absolutely nothing. On the back, nothing again, Amazon logo, that's about it. And on the front, the screen, and that's it. So this, this entire device only has one button on the entire thing, on the bottom, the power button right there. Let's see what happens when we press it. And nothing happened. So the battery truly is dead. All right, let me charge it up, and I'll come back to you in a minute. So I was kind of curious what would happen the second I plugged it in. So I have uh, <clears throat> the other end of the plug here on the Surface Pro. That should be enough power to get it going. And we'll see what happens when we plug it in right here. 
it is nice to use a standard USB cable. I hate, I hate specialized cables. It's nice that people are finally getting away from that stupid shite there. They can sell all that overpriced cables. I just want a normal one. So there's, oh, there's a light on the bottom. I didn't notice that before. Next to the button. And the USB plug. And now we'll see what happens when we push the power button. Let's see if it'll go. And it will no go. We'll let it charge, and I'll come back in a minute. <laughs> I don't have the power, Captain. I just plugged that in, but I still don't have the power. I guess it needs a few minutes there, so I'll come back to you in a minute. All right, so after leaving the Kindle on the charger for about a day, finally that battery icon changed to these uh, pens here, and the uh, the light on the bottom changed from uh, yellow to green. So I guess uh, yellow means, uh, let's see if we can get that to focus there. Yellow means critical battery, and uh, green means you're good to go. So now that that's on, we'll push the power button and see what happens. Uh, like I said, I have never used a Kindle before, so this is a first time e-reader for me. Oh, there it is. So we'll go ahead and uh, check our language. <clears throat> this is the eighth generation, so it's one of the first to have touch screen as opposed to a, a keyboard on the bottom like the old one had. And buttons on the side doesn't have those either. You press the screen. And then it boots up. The funny thing is, even though this screen, it doesn't seem like it's a computer, this actually has the same processor as uh, a lot of smartphones. It just seems strange when I read that. Uh, a bit of a surprise. It is interesting that it has the ability to uh, actually redraw this, this bar here without flashing the entire screen. I guess that's new technology, because I know the very old e-readers, they couldn't change anything uh, without... Um, the screen flashing like I just did a second ago. So there we go, look at that. Uh, there's thousands of books, all that good stuff there. Uh, there it is, Wi-Fi. And it is, okay, we'll connect to Wi-Fi then. All right, give me a second now. All right, so I put my password in here, and the first thing I noticed is the screen is actually quite sensitive. I was kind of pushing down hard, because the screen kind of reminds me of those old uh, capacitive screens, the, the crappy phones before the iPhone. But I think they're um, not, not capacitive, resistive screen. But it's, I, I believe it is capacitive, because it's very sensitive. Um, you can make it work with very little pressure on there. Just push that. And I don't know if it's going. I think it is. Come on there now, Kindle Connect. Okay, there it is. Connecting to Amazon. Okay, so the next step now is you put in your Amazon account information. All right, we'll log in with that, give me a second. All right, so after putting in my account number, I had actually changed the time automatically uh, to my time now. And uh, you see that it says it changed it and blah, blah, blah. Tap here to adjust all the stuff, good. So it's nice that Amazon makes this quite intuitive and easy uh, because I think a lot of the customers for the Kindle will be uh, people who like to read books and perhaps are a little older than your average person. I bought this uh, actually for my mother, so uh, right in that standard zone there. Now uh, we'll go continue setup. Okay. Uh oh, I think it's stuck. And I think the Kindle crashed. Well, isn't that nice there? <laughs> okay, just after talking about how intuitive it is, now it's new working. Okay, Kindle, well, I don't know. Okay, I think I dropped you down a few, uh, a few notches there on uh, reliability. First time turning it on, already crashed. Okay, well, we'll hold the power button and give it a restart. If that works, it normally works. Please. Uh, okay. You know, I think it's broken. Well, Amazon, I don't know if I'll be giving this a, a good uh, recommend here, <laughs> because the touch screen has already stopped working. And there are no other buttons on this, so there's no way to give it a restart. Well, that's that. I'll come back to you in a minute when I figure this out. Alright, well, after a quick reboot, holding down the power button for like 10 seconds, and then holding it down again for another 10 seconds, it uh, restarted and appears to be back online. So I'll, uh, I'll give it... Yeah, I guess I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. I don't know what happened there. It crashed. Not a good sign on the first go. So we'll just look through the features here. we got the home button, which is where we are. Mm, I guess there's the books. What is this? Is that the screen brightness? Airplane mode. Let's see what the settings are in here. 
like I said, I've never used an ebook reader before. And I've never seen a Kindle before, obviously, because it is a, a, an e-book reader. Uh, so we're going to do see reading options, device options. Let's see what's in there. Uh, language, social networks. What's that? Oh, it's taking some time to pull that up, isn't it? That'll be great. What is this? So I guess you can connect uh, Facebook or Twitter or Goodreads uh, to share excerpts, it doesn't look like you can actually browse it on here. That would be nice if I had a Facebook browser, I must admit. So we'll go back. As you can see, this, the touch screen is quite intuitive, I'm surprised. Uh, like I said, I thought it was going to be like the old... Do you remember the, the resistive screens where you had to tap like a stylus on there real hard? It's a lot better than that. Uh, let's see, uh, page refresh. Refresh the display, uh, notes and highlights. Yeah, okay, standard stuff there, look at that. And let's see, device options, let's see what that is. Uh, passcode, parental controls, oh you got to look at some naughty bits on there. Get a little Playboy down on, on your Kindle there, watch a little, uh, you go on the subway there and put a little porno on your Kindle. Uh, so that's for now, never mind. <laughs> I don't know if it can do that, possibly, possibly. Uh, let's see, language, personalize, let's see here, device name, time, blah blah blah. Okay, I'll go back, go back again. Uh, okay, that's about all that's in there. It takes us back home. Let's see what Goodreads is. Uh, see what your friends are reading. So this uh, Goodreads, I guess, is like a social network for books. So you, you sign up and you tell your friends what's going on and then they tell you and blah, blah, blah. It's all lots of fun there. Now nah, we'll go back. We don't need to deal with that right now. Uh, let's see if we can get a book started. There has to be something on here. Uh, uh, dictionary, that should work, right? Uh, okay, we'll add that to the collection. We'll see how this works. There are no collections. Okay, that's interesting. So that's, that's kind of a strange way that worked. Go back. This one? Okay, so that was another bit of a weird glitch there. Isn't that strange? It didn't open the other one, but this one opened. Okay, so, you know, it kind of works, but it's got a few issues there. Uh, I also have to say that the text is perhaps... This is sharp. This is a tad hard to read, I must admit. And then I don't... Let's see how we can... Uh, so let's see here what's going on there. I'm trying to make the text bigger. I don't remember how to do that. And I think we... Oh, there we go. So now it's giving us instructions. First time go around there. Uh, to continue, tap on the... Oh, well, I already knew that. Thank you very much, Amazon. Uh, tap on the top of the screen to display the toolbar. Ah, uh, here we go. This is what matters the most. This is why I think... why I think Kindles are, are more popular than ever. It's not actually because people like digital books. It's because the text is bigger. You can make it as big as you want. And, uh, you know, for people, if you wear glasses or whatever, it's a lot of eye strain on a standard book. Let me get out a standard book here again. There's a lot of eye strain on a standard book. Now, the text is very small. You have to have a lot of light on it. And here you can change the text to whatever you like, make it easier to see. But it's actually a funny story. The first time I ever saw a Kindle in use, uh, I used to work at this terrible place. And then the accountant there, she was an old lady, probably in her 80s. And she had an e-book reader. I think it was a Kindle. And she was, <laughs> she was reading Fifty Shades of Grey on there. It's a funny story. And, of course, she was blind being you know, in her 90s or whatever. And so there was just like three words per page. And it would say, like, you know, Mr. Gray put his hand down and then she go next page her skirt and phone next page and I was like what the hell are you reading there I guess crazy I don't know what's going on true story true story all right so that's how that works so you got your settings at the top you understand x-ray I wonder what that is oh, I can't go on go to I say you do a search interesting then press left it updates quite quickly yeah. Uh, oh, interesting. So there's another instruction. Press and hold a word to look it up. In 
interesting. So this is the, this is the stuff that makes the ebooks a lot more useful than uh, an old-fashioned paper book, or should I say, an analog plant-based information storage device, otherwise known as a book. You can uh, hold down on the words and get uh, an interesting uh, the uh, dictionary lookup on it, uh, as well as share and search. I wonder what search does. Interesting. You put, you, so you can search the Kindle store for the word that you highlighted. Let's see what happens when we click on that. Do 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 do. Three we cross up on a wall, and there's some books that it found. All right. All right, so there you have a first look at the Kindle 8th generation and unboxing uh, from someone who has never used a Kindle or e-reader before. So these are my first takes real time. I've never used this before in my life. Uh, generally, I think it's quite nice. Uh, the form factor is nice. It actually has thick bezels, which is good for holding. Um, the touch screen is quite responsive. It's nice not to have extra buttons because, like I said, that can be confusing for non tech-oriented people, which I think is the standard market for the Kindle. And it only has one button on the entire thing, the power button on the bottom, which is also good for non-tech-oriented people. And that's that.